Please stand. Men of Galilee, why gaze in wonder at the heavens? This Jesus whom you saw ascending into heaven will return to you as you saw him go. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves <laughs> to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May my God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie eleison. Christ eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we who believe that your only begotten Son, our Redeemer, ascended to this day to the heavens, may in spirit dwell already in heavenly realms, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, Theophilus, I dealt with all that Jesus did and taught until the day was taken up. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen, he presented himself alive to them by many proofs after he suffered, appearing to them during 40 days and speaking about the kingdom of God. While meeting with them, he enjoined them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, about which you have heard me speak. For John baptized with water, but in a few days he will be baptized, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. When they had gathered together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He answered them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has established by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were looking up, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him from their sight. While he was looking intent, at, while they were looking intently at the sky, he was going. Suddenly, two men dressed in white garments stood beside them. They said, "Men of Galilee, why are you standing there looking at the sky? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will return in the same way as you've seen him go into heaven." Verb of Domini. Alleluia. All you people clap your hands, shout to God with cries of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, the Awesome, is the great King over all the earth. God mounts his throne amidst shouts of joy. The Lord among amid trumpet blast. Sing praise to God, sing praise, sing praise to our King, sing praise. For the king of all the earth is God, sing hymns of praise. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. 
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, may the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation resulting in knowledge of him. May the eyes of your heart be enlightened that you may know what is the hope that belongs to his call and what the riches of glory in his inheritance among the holy ones and what is the surpassing greatness of his power for us who believe in accordance with the exercise of his great might, which he worked in Christ, raising him from the dead, seating him at the right hand in the heavens, far above every principality, authority, power, and dominion, and every name that is named not only in this age, but also in the one to come. And he put all things beneath his feet, gave him his head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. Verbum Domini. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Go and teach all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always into the end of the world. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain of which Jesus had ordered them. When they saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. Verbum Domini. All right, my brothers and sisters in Christ, so it's the ascension of the Lord. And I want to point out the gospel. Now, scripture scholars differ on this, but most of them agree that as much as they're on a mountain in Galilee here, right, that this passage, which is called the Great Commission, right, according to Matthew, this is the end of the gospel of Matthew, right, that this is kind of like a combination of different, it's different than Mark's uh, Great Commission, right? Uh, that it, it's probably a, a composition, so to speak, right? But that indeed, after Jesus said these words, he ascended into heaven. That's why this is one of the Gospels for Ascension, the Ascension, right? He says these words, and then he ascends into heaven. Right? And we wean from this, according to Luke, right, the teaching of Theophilus, that he ascends into heaven after he says these words, and the apostles are gaping, right? And the and the and the the, the angels, right, say to the apostles, why are you staring in heaven? Didn't he tell you? He told you he was gonna go. Right? He told you he was gonna go. Right? All right. Well, what's going on here? Well, it came to me several years ago, quite a few years ago now. I was, I was a priest, but it came to me that the ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is the exclamation point of the Eucharistic discourse. It is the validity, the validation of the Eucharistic discourse. Why do I say that? A couple of reasons. Remember the Eucharistic discourse Jesus is going on and on and on about his Father in heaven and about his body, right? And he says, if you eat my body and drink my blood, you'll have eternal life and I'll raise you up on the last day. If you don't eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. And if you eat my body and drink my blood because it's real food, right? my flesh is real food and my, and my blood is real drink, if you eat my body and drink my blood, I remain in you and you remain in me. Right? And what was the response as he's given the Eucharistic discourse? They're getting more and more upset. 
And finally, they say at the end, this is a hard teaching who can accept it. Right? We know that after Jesus gave a, a, a non-explanation about it being, you got to think supernaturally, right? Many left and never to follow him again. But Jesus says something very, very strange when they say this is a hard teaching, who can accept it? Right? He says, does this shake your faith? Does it shake your faith? Then he says, what if you saw me ascend to where I was before? So in essence, what he's saying is, this is a hard teaching that shakes your faith. Well, if you see me ascend to where I was before, will you believe this teaching? Right? And here we come, all right, to the Great Commission. Jesus ascends to where he was before. They're gaping up in the sky. The angels, all right, say, why are you staring in the sky? He told you we had to go. And then we know, all right, that the apostles, in another version, go joyfully back to Jerusalem, right? And you can almost picture John hitting Peter, hitting Peter and saying, he, he just said, you remember in the Eucharistic discourse, he said, that, that hard teaching, would you believe that hard teaching if you saw me ascend to where I was before? Well, he just did, he just did. Right? And they started rejoicing, right? Because what else did he say? Right? Well, in the Great Commission, he says, all authority, he says, all power in heaven and earth has been given to me. What's the implication here? He says, go therefore. All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, go therefore. What's the implication? I've already given it to you. I've already given you all power on heaven and earth. Go, therefore, baptize all nations in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But the next line is very, very important, and it's intended to be overlooked. And teach them to obey all that I commanded. Why does Jesus say all that I commanded? Because basically what he's saying is the easy stuff and the hard stuff too. Even if it means they leave you. You teach them the hard stuff. Because when everybody left, after I taught the Eucharistic discourse, I didn't say, wait, come back, you misunderstood. No, they leave, they leave. Teach them to obey all that I commanded. The easy stuff and the hard stuff. Now, why do I think he was referencing the Eucharistic discourse? Because the next line, which is a Eucharistic line, as there is a Eucharistic line in all the scripture. And no, be convinced that I am with you always, even to the end of the age. What a strange thing, right? You sense into heaven, but I'm going to be with you always. How? In the Eucharist. In the Eucharist, right? No, be convinced. He almost uses the same words that Peter used at the end of the Eucharistic discourse when, when Jesus says, are you going to leave me too? And Peter says, where are we going to go? We've come to know and we're convinced that you're Christ, the Son of the living God, and that you have the, the, the words of eternal life. This is the words of eternal life, right? So this is a, a beautiful, beautiful, I think, Ascension Sunday. should be Thursday. I still think it should be Thursday. Yeah. All right? But... The ascension, more than anything, is the explanation point. It is the fulfillment of the promise of eternal salvation. It is the fulfillment of the Eucharist. And then there's one thing missing, and that's the consent of the Holy Spirit, all right, that turns the sacramental church into the sacramental church. So we, we today, all right, we uh, uh, celebrate the coming of the Holy Spirit. That will be coming really in 10 days, novena period, nine days. But we also celebrate the Eucharist, right? This hard teaching that many people accept. Look at, think about how many Catholics have rejected it. How many Christians have rejected it? And yet it's the what the world needs, right? To be guaranteed there is salvation. So this is what we celebrate today. 
the ascending of our Lord into heaven, but the fulfillment of the promise of eternal life, his body, his blood in the Eucharist. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now ask our Father in heaven to shed his mercy on all of our needs. For the Catholic Church, the Pope, bishops, priests, deacons, religious, for our seminary study for the priesthood. For those discerning religious life of mothers, fathers, husbands, wives, sons, daughters, brothers, sisters, that everybody in their vocation may desire to do all things in humble obedience. For the praise, honor, and glory of God, and atonement, and reparation for our sins, and charity and chastity in our vocations, we pray to the Lord. For peace in the world, Eucharistic unity amongst all Christians, the conversion of the world, the conversion of nations and political leaders, conversions necessary within the hierarchy of the church, within our family, and for our own daily personal conversions, for anyone that we wound or led astray in our lives, for anyone that's wounded us, that we be reconciled with everyone, uh, for the end of all the vicious attacks against life, marriage, and family, and for the least of Christ's brethren, the unborn, the poor, the sick, the thirsty, the naked, the homeless, the hungry, the imprisoned, for all those suffering any trial or tribulation, whether it be physical or spiritual, and they may find comfort in Jesus as we reach out to them in spiritual and corporal works of mercy. We pray to the Lord. For the particular intentions of this Mass, my intentions, the intentions of those attending this Mass, watching this Mass, the intentions of all those that we said we would pray for, including those who may forget to pray for, for the intentions of those who pray for us, encourage us, support us each day, uh, for our family intentions, for the souls in purgatory, especially those that have no one to pray for them, in particular our deceased loved ones and family members and our loved ones and family members who are away from the church, that they may embrace Christ's sacraments of mercy, we pray to the Lord. And we ask for this, we ask for all good things through the intercession of St. Joseph, St. Paul, and the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the angels, martyrs, and saints, in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. Become for us the bread of life. Blessed you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness, have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands, become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be accepted to God, the Almighty Father. We offer sacrifice now in supplication, O Lord, to honor the wondrous ascension of your Son, grant we pray that through this most holy exchange we too may raise, rise up to heavenly realms through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight that he may make us sharers in this divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, governor throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, our Bishop. And all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here is faith and devotion known to you. For them we offer you the sacrifice of praise. Or they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them at the redemption of their souls. In the hope of health and well-being and paying their homage to you. The eternal God, living and true, celebrating the most sacred day on which your only begotten Son, our Lord, placed at the right hand of your glory our weak human nature, which he united to himself in communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter, Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John, and Paul, Cosmos, and Damian, and all your saints we ask through their merits and prayers, and all things may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, and of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation, and counted among the flock you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hand. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion and resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer you to your glorious majesty for the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, 
the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar may receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace to us also, your servants who, those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merit, but grant us your part through Christ our Lord, to whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Grace you grant peace in our days. And by the help of your mercy, may be always free from sin and saved from all distress. So we wait the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace, I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alleluia. All right, so for communion, come up. You can either, oh, wrong way. You can either kneel or stand here. I'll give you communion here. And then you can go down this row here, okay? So come forward for communion. <clears throat> Body of Christ. Body of Christ.
body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who allow those on earth to celebrate divine mysteries, grant we pray that Christian hope may draw us onward to where our nature is united with you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And mighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You reign now in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. Well, those at home, thank you for joining us. We're in the St. Joseph Chapel here in New Bern, North Carolina. I will be doing my live today at a Knights of Columbus talk. So join us later on for Father Imperato Live. Thank you for joining us. Go out into the world today, my friends. Give them heaven. And remember, share this video, one share per group, one share per page. And I'll get to my website, protestchildkilling.com. Subscribe to my Rumble channel. I love you. Pray for me. I'll pray for you.